Hello everyone, I'm back again uh, real quick. just want to say a quick thank you for all of the wonderful comments that you guys left on the last reading updates that I did. It was a very uh, warm and nice response to being back after a year, and I really appreciate that quite a bit. Uh, it's been a little bit less than a month since that video, uh, which is right on track with where I wanted to be for the most part. I have started and finished about a dozen books since the last time I was here, uh, since the last time I talked to you, uh, I saw like a couple of those dozen I'm still in the middle of, but that means that I have enough to make this video and possibly one or two others uh, after this one. Uh, so you'll hopefully see me again pretty soon. I'm going to just talk about four in this video and I'm going to try to do that going forward. Maybe keep the videos uh, down to like three, three to five books or so. Uh, just to kind of keep them, not from from keep them from getting too long, and uh, so I can give more time to each book. Like I said, there are four in this one. Uh, I've been really on this sort of mystery kick at the moment. I'm really just in the mood for mysteries. I kind of have to do that. I have to just let my mood tell me what to read. Sometimes, if I try to force myself to read things that I that are outside of the genre that I'm currently super in the mood to read, I get in huge reading slumps. I feel like that happens to me. A lot and that's one of the reasons why I get into reading slumps because I uh, try to read way too much all at once and uh, when I have a very specific mood that I'm in at that moment. So right now I'm in a mystery mood so a lot of the books you'll hear me talk about over the next little bit, uh, next few weeks probably, maybe even longer than that, I don't know, will be mysteries. So the first book we're going to talk about is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Now this is a bit of a story within a story. Uh, we begin the book with this editor receiving the manuscript for uh, the newest book by uh, one of her publisher's uh, best-selling authors, this mystery writer named Alan Conway. And this is the latest book in his uh, mystery series that he's been working on for a while, and this is actually supposed to be the last book in the series. Uh, it's called Magpie Murders. The, the manuscript is called Magpie Murders. And uh, so the, the very beginning begins with her uh, kind of giving this quick narration on, you know, it's, it's one of those narrations where this character knows everything that's already happened in the story already and is letting you know, like, you know, I didn't realize at the time that, like, how much this manuscript would end up changing my life, like that kind of thing. It's a very quick narration, and then she just kind of uh, dives right into reading the manuscript. And uh, then we, we get that manuscript, uh, that, for, that little bit of a story within a story, for the first half of the book. And uh, within the, ma the manuscript Magpie Murders, uh, we are introduced to a detective named Atticus Punt. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a historical fiction mystery series that Alan Conway, the fictional writer, has created. Uh, uh, Atticus Punt is a German. This takes place not too long after World War II. Uh, Atticus has just been told very recently that he's going to die very soon because he has cancer. And so uh, so there's this death in this small town. Uh, this lady is found dead at the bottom of a st by the, by the bottom of the stairs in this manor house. Uh, it's actually not really sure whether or not it's a murder or whether it was an accident, but there's a rumor going around in the town that her son did it because they were seen arguing the day before. And this uh, this woman's son's fiance, uh, she is quite upset at the rumors. So she goes to Atticus and asks him to investigate uh, the death of this woman and uh, to kind of clear the fiance's name, her fiance's name, because uh, she knows that he didn't do it. So uh, she, Atticus is really unsure whether he wants to spend uh, the last little bit of his life uh, working on this case. He's been working on this book for a long time. He kind of wants to finish it or at least work on it a little bit more. He, d he just wants to get his, gets his infair affairs in order. Uh, he wants to not necessarily work on a case like this, and he's not sure he can even prove. Uh, he's not in the business of proving whether someone didn't do something. Uh, he wants to go off and find you know the truth of what happened of something, and he's not sure uh, that he can devote his t the last bits of his time uh, to doing something like this, so she, so he says no uh, to the girl, and then there's another murder uh, in the town, another death, but it, this one is definitely a murder. Uh, this guy is found in the same manor house. Uh, he is the owner of the manor house, uh, with his head just clean chopped off, and so obviously it's a murder. And so Atticus has found out about this, and uh, his his interest has been piqued, and so he comes to the town to investigate. 
uh, not only this death, but whether or not it is related to the death of the other woman. Uh, and uh, since both were done in the same house, it seems likely that they might have been. And uh, both of these people, uh, specifically the man, but both of them weren't really very well liked by anyone. And so this whole town kind of becomes uh, suspect. Uh, and Atticus, of course, goes around and does lots of investigating and uh, finds out all the different reasons why people didn't like these two uh, for all the different reasons, all the different things that have happened between everybody in this town. Uh, and it's quite it's quite fun. Uh, I, I got really into uh, the second half, this first half of the book, sorry, before it got to the second half. And so right at the, right at the halfway mark, basically right at the halfway mark, uh, the manuscript just abruptly ends and, uh, we go into the next part of the story, which follows the editor. And so the editor stops reading because the manuscript has just suddenly ended. The, she doesn't have the ending to it. It's a little tiny bit jarring, you know, uh, of course it is to go from one, half of the book to the next where it's just two completely different stories although they are related in some ways uh, obviously because uh, part of the mystery of the second half is where is the rest of this manuscript and then uh, it's also uh, it's not really a spoiler because it happens right uh, like it let, let you know right at the beginning of the second half and that's kind of the beginning of that second story that this author the author of magpie murders uh, has been found dead so there's two mysteries happening here, the mystery of the book and the mystery uh, outside of the book uh, that the editor is trying to figure out. Uh, and the editor is a really good character. I So I wasn't sure how I would feel about going into the second half of the book after uh, getting invested into the first half of the book, because I really like Atticus. I really liked how that first half was going. And the second half going into that was a little bit jarring, but uh, I ended up getting into it more quickly than I thought I would. I thought I would because the character's in the second half are also really interesting. The editor, uh, it doesn't really know what she's doing, but kind of feels compelled to investigate things that she finds to be a little bit odd about the situation. Uh, like where, why didn't he give, uh, cause it's kind of seen, uh, that he committed suicide. Like people think he committed suicide, this author, but she's not really sure. And she's really f like, upset that he wouldn't have given her uh, or the publisher in general uh, the rest of the manuscript and she wants to find out why or if she can find it herself and so she begins to sort of investigate what happens to uh, what happened to Alan Conway and what happened to the rest of his manuscript and uh, it's it's really fun uh, it's a really interesting kind of uh, meta take on the first half of the book because and especially like right after uh, that manuscript end, she kind of goes through all the things that she noticed about Magpie Murders. She gives like this list of things, uh, like all of the different clues that have appeared and like where they appeared in that manuscript and stuff. It's quite a bit of fun to see uh, her try to solve the mystery of uh, the manuscript while at the same time trying to solve the real life mystery. And I really enjoyed this quite a bit. It was a lot of fun. All of the characters in both stories were really good. And in general, I just, I love the format. Uh, it might not appeal to everybody. And it might not work for everybody, but I really liked the format and I really enjoyed how it all played out. Uh, I really, I really like what Anthony Horowitz did with this. And I'm really excited to read his next book, which just came out. Uh, the word is murder. Now, which you probably see me talk about very soon. I highly recommend this book if you're looking for a sort of different take on a murder mystery. Uh, if you like that sort of whodunit kind of thing, uh, like I do, then you'll really like the first half. And then I think you'll also really get into the second half uh, because it's a different kind of whodunit that's mixed in uh, with what happened in the first uh, first half of that book. So it was really good. It was a really interesting take on the idea and I highly recommend it. The next book I want to talk about is A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny. This is the second book in her uh, Chief Inspector Gamache. I'm, that's always how I pronounce it. I, let me know if I'm pronouncing that wrong if you've read this. Uh, Gamache. And uh, I read the first book, Still Life, last year and quite enjoyed it. It takes place in this town called Three Pines. And uh, when that book happens, it's kind of a huge deal that a murder happens in Three Pines. But it seems to me like the series has gone on a long time. There's a lot of books in the series now. One comes out almost every year. And one I think one just came out this year or is about to come out this year at some point very soon. And so like a lot of murders are happening in this town. I'm, I think all of them are set in Three Pines. Anyway, it follows a lot of the same characters as the first book uh, with some with some new characters added in. Uh, basically, this 
character, this woman who is very disliked, uh, has just moved to Three Pines. It's actually really interesting to see the similarities uh, between this one and Magpie Murders. I was reading the physical, this physical book uh, while I was listening to Magpie Murders, and I kept seeing similarities between the the mysteries, especially the first half. Well, actually, even the second half of Magpie Murders and this one, uh, but a lot of the first half, where it's this character that like no one likes, and I I I, I think it's funny how often that happens in murder mysteries. It's it's a great device, a great plot device to have the the character who died to not have been liked by anyone and you completely as a reader you completely understand why no one liked that person uh because then it really makes every single person you encounter that knew that person a possible suspect and it just creates this huge pool of suspects uh that the the inspector or the investigator or detective or whatever get to choose from and it's it's quite a, it's quite fun in my opinion uh even if it is a little bit played out anyway so this was this was interesting uh all, an interesting take on that because the woman dies in a very strange way. She is electrocuted uh, in the middle of a curling match uh, and out in like the middle of a snowy landscape, kind of like so it's all snowy and some and there's like a ton of people all around at this curling match. And this lady suddenly gets like electrocuted and it's seen as a very odd way to kill someone. But it is it's very obvious that it was a murder. But throughout the whole thing, they're like very confused at how this murder was pulled off and why it was pulled off in the way it was pulled off. Uh, so there's this big pool of uh, people, these suspects to choose from as you read it. And I uh, kind of saw the ending coming uh, as it came, but I still quite enjoyed it. The main character, uh, the well, actually, I guess he is the main character, but the the real main characters are like the people of Three Pines. The town of Three Pines really and its and its inhabitants really dominate the book. But uh, Inspector Gamash also is a really good character, and I enjoy him. Uh, I didn't f I didn't get a ton of his personality. I feel like in the first book, but this book it really adds on to what you learn about him in the first book. Uh, and uh, this one, uh, I feel like does a better job of giving you a good idea of who he is and how he works and uh, what kind of uh, personality he has. Uh, there's some weird things happening towards the end of this book that were like suddenly introduced that I feel like were not really uh, flushed out too well. I, I can't really explain it very well. I didn't really love the lead up to the ending of this book, not just because I saw the the ending coming but also because of some weird stuff that was thrown in that i'm guessing will be addressed in the next book uh but it was like the super huge foreshadowing for something happening in the next book i guess uh but it also kind of made this one seem like it stood alone uh on its own not as well as it could have uh anyway i don't know how to explain that any better than i had it. i just did but uh either way i did like it i i liked the ride of trying to figure it out as I went along. And like I said, I did think I did figure it out pretty early, I feel like. Uh, but I also obviously couldn't have known for sure. So I was really hoping to be surprised. I, nece I wasn't necessarily surprised, but I was also uh, really uh, invested into the cast of characters and the uh, chief inspector character as well. Uh, and that that usually is what best works for me in murder mysteries is when I can really get into uh, who the cast of characters are uh, along with the investigator, the person uh, questioning them and stuff. And that's what I love is an investigator going around questioning people. And uh, it's quite a bit of fun. And the next book that I read is The Woman in the Window by, oh, this is the ARC cover. So it's, that's the actual cover, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. Uh, I bought this ARC at like a, a book sale or a thrift store or something. I don't even remember where I bought it. I think it was a book sale. Uh, but I bought it and it was at a thrift store, actually. It was. Uh, it was at a thrift store. Uh, I found it and decided to read it because it just came out in January. And I've seen it in a lot of places, uh, kind of all over, though didn't really know anything about the plot before I went into it. Now, this one I did not ver enjoy very much. It uh, kind of gave me a lot of the same similar problems that I have with other books like it, like the, the Gillian Flynn books of the world, uh, Gillian Flynn, Ruth Ware like people like that. I just feel like, well, let me just talk about this book. This book, I feel like didn't really have very much substance to it at all. Uh, the main character, 
isn't really much of a character. I don't feel like there's just not a whole lot to it. There's not a whole lot that happens. Uh, there's not a whole lot of personality there uh, to drive the story. The really only thing that drives the story is just how quick and snappy the writing is. Uh, it's just like almost every page like looks like uh, just, I don't know, it's just filled with snappy dialogue back and forth to the point where it's, I don't feel like this writer can actually write sentences <laughs> like or paragraphs. Uh, I don't think there's a single paragraph in this book with more than three sentences in it. And they're all just like these quick, snappy things that don't really say anything. Uh, and it, the, the plot doesn't really even start happening until 200 pages through the book. At 200 pages, that's when something actually happens and the plot starts really you could skip you not skip but you like you don't really need the first 200 pages really uh for the plot uh he tries to build up the sort of routine this character has the main character has uh, agoraphobia and is just kind of trapped in her house in gramercy park in new york city and likes to spy on her neighbors and watch the comings and goings of her neighbors and she has these new neighbors that she's been watching and uh, she kind of has some of these some interactions uh, with uh, some of these new people. There's a man and a woman, they're married, and their son. Uh, so the, the the mother, she comes over and visits a couple times. She's kind of eccentric. Uh, then the son comes over, he's a little bit quiet and a little bit weird. And uh, so, but she kind of gets to know both of them, uh, gets to see a bit more into their, their lives than she really intended. Uh, she usually just likes to watch from a distance, but they just kind of come over and uh, gets to get to know her a little bit more, both a little bit off and have a little bit of a, an off relationship with the, the man that's in the house, the, the father, uh, husband character. He is kind of this typical uh, controlling, uh, very restrictive person, very strict of man, uh, and he is kind of hinted at as being sort of abusive, but when we're not really, we don't really see anything for sure, uh, but then at like 200, I don't even know if I should tell you this because it's like 200 pages of, through the way of the book, uh, and, but that's really where the plot starts. Basically, uh, the mother character is like, she, the, the main character sees this mother character get killed, she thinks. But possibly not like she's not sure but she like calls the police and she freaks out and she like runs outside of her house which is really difficult for her to do and she collapses and then the police start like questioning her and like apparently it didn't happen this new lady that she's never seen before comes along and is like no i'm i'm this person's wife and uh, the son's mother like i'm i'm this person this person you've never seen before like that's me this, that other lady that you saw that you talked to that came over to your house, uh, she doesn't actually exist. Like, who are you even talking about? Like, you're crazy. And so the police think she's crazy, and she's not sure if she's crazy. She's kind of unreliable. She's an unreliable narrator. It's told from her, her perspective. So uh, the whole thing is, for me, the character's not really much of a character. The, the author tries to trick you into thinking she's a character by giving her agoraphobia. That's really her only personality trait. And then likes to pretend that other things are personality traits like and that's not really even a personality trait but like to pretend that other things are personality traits like she's a heavy drinker she drinks a whole lot like that's her personality her personality is being a heavy drinker she takes a lot of drugs and mixes it with alcohol and she's unreliable and she has agoraphobia that's like her personality there's really nothing else to it she has these snappy like thoughts that she really only tells you she really only tells herself and tells the reader what the author wants you to know at the time. Uh, she only really remembers things or tells you things or lets you know things as you go along as the author would like you to know those things, uh, which just seems really contrived and I have always have a difficult time with. I found myself rolling my eyes so many times throughout this just because there's just so many cringy moments where the writing just is trying to say something but really isn't. and it's just the sentences are just going by so quickly it makes you think it's a page turner when it's really not it's really not very interesting at all until like the second half where you're like yes i kept on wanting to know what happened because i i couldn't really tell what happened uh because there's really no way to know what happened there's really isn't any way to know what happened uh there's a certain thing a certain clue that happens that is po very heavily pointed out towards the beginning and that the main character doesn't even remotely think about 
until like the very end of the book and the whole time i'm just like screaming at the character in my mind to remember this one thing that would help her quite a bit uh later on that she just doesn't seem to want to remember because the author doesn't want her to remember it i don't know i don't know if i'm explaining this very well basically i didn't like it very much uh the character was a, not a character at all the plot barely had any substance to it it just it's wanted to be a quick page turner and it didn't quite know how to be one without just not just putting in as little writing as possible put as little writing in as possible it'll be a total page turner say as little as little as possible in the most amount of pages as possible and you'll have a page turner in your hands and uh, while i did want to know what happened next i wasn't entirely surprised by the ending and in fact saw it coming way before the main character did which was really frustrating because the main character just didn't seem to have any clue what was going on at any point in time. Uh, and there was only really only one interesting character in there. That was this character who was renting out her basement, like as a, as an apartment, she was renting out her basement as an apartment to this one character who actually seemed to have some depth to him. And I kind of wanted to know more about him, uh, cause he was actually kind of interesting and had a really strange personality and actually, uh, was sort of compelling. And, uh, like I, it's kind of hinted at that he might be the person responsible for something. I don't even know. It's the main character is never even really sure what happened or what is happening and doesn't know who to blame it on. And so is constantly suspecting everyone. And she's constantly sort of suspecting this character. That's interesting. The only interesting character in the book, uh, that guy. And I knew it wasn't him the entire time. And I just wanted her to not focus on him but at the same time I wanted him to be more a part of the story but then he just kind of leaves and doesn't come back and is really underutilized anyway I didn't love this didn't really like it very much it was okay at best and uh it just fell into that category of books other books that I've read like uh, I, I would compare this very heavily to Ruth Ware if you like Ruth Ware you might like this I do not like her books that I've read by her at all I don't understand why she's so popular her Giselle works at a bookstore. My wife, Giselle, works at a bookstore and like uh, constantly is telling me how Ruth Ware's books have just been on the bestseller list for months and months and all of her new books immediately go into the bestseller list. And I just don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I think this one was probably on the bestseller list as well. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I didn't really get it. I don't really get books like this. I gave it a shot hoping that it would be better than those, but it wasn't. Uh, and I, I, one of the reasons why I was really uh, looking forward to it when I went into it is because I'm really in the mood for books that are set in New York City at the moment also. And that's something you might see going forward and more books set in New York City because that's something I really want to read right now. Uh, and as a book set in New York City, it was kind of fun to see it like set in Gramercy Park and stuff. But other than that, there really wasn't much to it, I don't feel like. And the last book I'm going to talk about is The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. This was this was good. I enjoyed it. I've been seeing this uh, listed on Audible for quite a while, uh, and I did listen to it on audiobook, even though I do own the physical copy. I just I just bought this like right after I finished. I saw this at uh, I think it was it was either I can never remember. I think it was a thrift store. I, we just went to a bunch of thrift stores and a book sale, a big book sale. So I can't remember where I got certain things, uh, but I it was either one of those two. And I just finished listening to it, so I quite liked it. I've already moved on to some other books in the series. Uh, it is part of a series called Detective Max Rupert, which is sort of a loose... Uh, the are books that are sort of have a loose connection to this character, Detective Max Rupert. This book only has Max Rupert in it for like the last fourth or fifth of it. Uh, which actually I think is a really interesting way to tell a series. I'm on the third book now and that has, uh, that's basically all about Max Rupert, but this book barely has any of a minute. Uh, this book is about Joe Taubert and it's told from his first person perspective. He, uh, is in college and has a writing assignment for a biography class that he's taking where he has to, uh, go and find someone interesting to write a biography about. And so he doesn't really have anyone in his life, uh, any, like, I think the, the specific, assignment is to find someone older and he doesn't really have anyone older in his life that he wants to talk to so he goes to this old person's home and uh, finds this guy who was a convicted murderer uh, he was convicted and in prison for like 30 something years uh, for raping and murdering this girl uh, if, uh, back in the 70s I think and he 
isn't sure if he wants to do this or not to do this with this guy but as he talks to the guy the guy reveals you know that he's going to definitely die very very soon he uh his he's been told that he only has a little bit longer to live uh and he wants to tell the whole truth to joe and so joe and him get to talking and uh joe joe has this sort of really crappy mother and this really crappy home situation uh, her mother, his mother is just awful. Uh, he has an autistic brother who is actually a really good character. It's one of the best depictions I think I've ever read of an autistic character. Now that I've read that many, honestly, uh, but I thought it was a really good portrayal of that. And, uh, I was quite impressed with it. And I really liked that character a lot. I really liked their relationship, the, the two brothers relationship. Uh, and I really liked the main character a lot. Uh, the main character is this very, non-judgmental non he, he's a bouncer and he he knows how to uh like be forceful with people but he's not he doesn't go out looking to be forceful with people like for example his mother has this really crappy boyfriend as you would expect it's kind of cliche in that way but he has to deal with this his mother's awful boyfriend a couple times and he takes no pleasure in dealing uh forceful like physical things to other people but he will if he has to uh like he'll take down someone if he has to and he doesn't like he doesn't take pleasure out of it he doesn't judge other people usually uh he tries he's a, he's just a good person i feel like he was a really good person uh there's this character that lives in the apartment building that he lives in that he meets her name is lila and she really helps him to kind of she kind of helps to balance him uh, he is this sort of non-judgmental person and he just kind of taking, uh, this, this convicted murderer's, uh, story as it comes. And she, she's not really sure if he should even be writing about the story or like if he should be questioning it more, questioning whether he's telling the truth more. And so she helps him look into, uh, whether or not this, what this guy's telling Joe is the truth. And as they look more and more into how things happened. Uh, there's like some things that are up in the air of how, of like whether or not they happened the way they uh, were said to happen in the investigation uh, originally 30 something years ago. And so it's basically Joe just really trying to get down uh, to the bottom of things, get down to writing the most truthful depiction of what happened as possible and um, the most truthful depiction of uh, this guy's life as he can uh, for this assignment that he has. And like I said, it's, it's really good. I, I quite enjoyed it a bit. It's a little bit cliche in some parts well, where it's like a little bit on the nose with, uh, you know, the title of the life we bury. I'm not sure if I'm going to say it the right way, but a little, a little bit of it felt uh, heavy handed at some points. But at the same time, I did quite enjoy reading this and uh, the characters I thought were actually uh, very good. Uh, the convicted murderer character uh, and, the, and Joe and Lila. And the only, the only really characters and the, the autistic brother who was really good uh, and just all of their relationship was really good. And then uh, when Max Rupert finally shows up, you kind of get a bit of him, even though you don't get too much. Uh, you really get more of him in the later books, which I'll talk about in another reading updates video. There are other characters, though, like the mother character and like the mother's boyfriend and some other characters that are super cliche and just like super over the top and kind of like character characters. And uh, like he really the, the author definitely focused a lot more on uh having this the the depth within the the more main characters than any of the secondary characters which you know is normal but uh, at the same time it was a little bit uh, lopsided i felt like in this uh, but all, overall i did really quite enjoy it and uh, i didn't i didn't really know where it was going towards the end uh, and there was a, a, some twist that i definitely didn't see coming and that quite surprised me and that i enjoyed and so I, I'd recommend this. I, I, like I said, I saw this everywhere listed on Audible. I was about to get it on Audible, but then I saw it on Overdrive and I wasn't sure if I wanted to give, uh, like to spend one of my Audible credits on it when I didn't know anything about it really. Uh, even though I had seen it everywhere, it kept getting recommended to me by Audible based on other things that I listened to. Uh, so then I saw an Overdrive, give it a shot, and now I'm listening to the other ones in the series. I already finished the second one, so you'll hear me talk about that soon. And I'm like halfway through the third one, and uh, they're they're enjoyable. I like Alan Eskin's writing, and I feel like the books have gotten better as they've gone along so far. So uh, I highly suggest you give this a shot if that sounds interesting to you. And so that's it. Uh, those are the four books I wanted to talk about. This did go a little bit longer than I thought it would. But I'm glad I got to spend some time on each book. Hopefully uh, you liked it. I, I know I'm still rusty 
still very, very rusty at this. It's a bit, still a bit difficult to uh, get my thoughts in working order uh, like I used to be able to. Uh, well, some I, I still wasn't very good at it before, but uh, uh, the one or well, when I did like these kinds of videos, I don't think I'll be going back to doing like individual reviews at least for a while because those take quite a bit longer. I like really really work on those to make them concise and direct and like have my thoughts completely put together before I do them. Whereas these are kind of like spur of the moment thoughts kind of thing. And so, and this is a lot easier and quicker to do than those ones. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to go back into doing full reviews of like individual books or whatever, but this I feel like is a good format. I enjoy doing this format. And this one took me a lot less time than the last one I tried to do did. Uh, the last reading video, uh, reading updates video took a lot longer than this one took to film. So Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you'll look forward to seeing more from me very soon. Like I said, I already have some more books to talk about. So you'll see uh, uh, me talk about a few more uh, next week, probably. I'm hoping that's when the next one I'll get up is uh, next weekend. Thank you guys again, and I will see you later with more.